about to hear the recorded audio diaries of Michael Swain, Adam Ganser, and Abe Epperson, transmitted to you from another dimension through the wonder of podcast technology. Lost in the multiverse, they have to dig into a different piece of multiversal fiction each episode in the hopes of finally discovering a way back to their reality. How do they know this isn't their reality? Because one of them is being a real asshole. Will our heroes ever make it home, or will they inadvertently explore our obsession with multiverses, alternate timelines, and parallel worlds, and tie it all into a conversation about postmodern art, pop culture, and what it means to be a human right now? This is Escape from the Multicurse. All right. All right. Okay. We found this one. I don't know what this one is. I don't know why we're all strapping up googly eyes this time, but that's what we're going to do because uh, we found another universe. put those there? I didn't put them there. That last one was rough with the acid (laughs) rain and the gummy worms, but (laughs) alive. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. Uh, I didn't like that one. This one seems normal enough. Uh, I don't... I don't appreciate that Abe is trying to put his fingers in my mouth already. All right. All right. <laughs> that's um, not that weird. <laughs> Got to get that on the show. So podcast equipment set up. Okay. And we're rolling. Wonderful. Great. Abe, you with us, buddy? Yeah. 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 I'm just out of breath from the, all the fucking portals. The portal travel. <laughs> we are they portal They do wind pals. you. <gasps> Nobody yeah. ever warns yeah. you how winded you get it's hard. between oh. dimensions. Talk yeah. about running up that hill. Yeah. Going yeah. to the upside down is a bitch. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I was not. I did not have the cardiovascular shape for uh, multiverse travel that was required. There's dust. What is that dust? Nobody knows. It's sticky. It's a it sticky dust. Like, it's a wet dust, which you never. But wet, not mud. Sticky dust. Not mud. Ugh. No, because <laughs> it doesn't my wash throat. off like mud does. It doesn't no. wash off at all. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Anyway, next time we hit a shower. That's probably enough telling people what happened to us, right? How about we jump into this podcast we're obligatorily recording? Yeah. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of Escape from the Multicurse. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I'm one of your doomed travelers, Adam Ganser, and with me are my other uh, companions in the sad travail. Mm-hmm. Please announce yourselves. I'm Abe <laughs> Everson. It's so much harder with three. So much harder with three. You, God, the you banter have of never. You have no, never done it. <laughs> I want to. The, that one was not intentional. I'm Michael Swaim. I just thought Abe would be second. I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> I defy our listeners to go back in time and mm-hmm. listen to any time I've prompted Sway or Abe to introduce themselves and see if they've <laughs> ever done it right. Never done it right. No, no, no. I thought I was second and that was the appropriate amount <laughs> of time. <laughs> yeah, I thought <laughs> Sway jumped his cue a bit, frankly. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I mean, but this is a podcast where we travel through the many dimensions trying to find our way sure home. Do. And every yeah. di- every time we hit a new dimension, we like to record a quick podcast about a film that also involves the multiverse in order to test, you know, like, honestly, it just seems to work out. Like, by the end of a podcast, that's about how long it usually takes me to figure out whether we're home or not. Haven't Typically. Been so far. Um, yeah, there's no, always been a no. slight difference in one of us. One of us has always had some kind of problem. Uh, I think that's it. I think we got it. Have you ever wondered what would happen if none of us had a problem, but it was obviously not the right universe? <laughs> like, we're all fine, but it's a universe made out of baked beans or something. Like, what happens then? Do we stay there? Is that but, what happens? Like, nobody, yeah, but nobody is trying to sabotage right. our getting home. Yeah, that would be that Well, it's an audio wonderful. medium, so yeah, we usually... It has to be like one of the voices you hear is, is <laughs> on. For all you know, the, we're in the beautiful Bush's Baked Bean footage universe That's right true. now. And for all I know. Right. reporting that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For all I know either. I'm feeling pretty good about this chunk. Adam, in 18 seconds, they'll be here. You need to piss yourself. You need to piss yourself to thwart the death of us all. Piss yourself now. Do it, Adam. Chuchunk. Come on. Uh, Adam, piss I mean, yourself. I, let me drink some water. Let me drink some water real quick. Uh, hey, let's I let the audience listen to that. Good point. That was weird, huh? Abe. What? That was weird, but I do think Adam should piss himself. I would love that. Yeah, it's not himself. entirely out of character for Abe. Uh, a thing he would often say to me under the cigarette tree. I think but- Abe's trying to get us on the rails, man, because he's referencing, of course, <laughs> the film that we're here to discuss. Uh, Everything, everywhere, all at once. Twenty twenty two. What a film! 
Oh my goodness! Uh, what a great film! Yeah, let's uh, let's jump on the multi map here and talk a little bit about everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, this is the segment of our podcast where we describe the takeaways that we have about the multiverse as an artistic medium, as a philosophical concept, based on this piece of media that we just watched. Again, the movie Everywhere, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Um, which brave sojourner would like to go first? What about well, you, is, Swaymo? You is it fair to say this is where we also say like how it uses the multiverse yes, concept? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I always yes. forget whether that's this or the next one. It's all baked into this. Yeah, so um, it, this is then I guess pretty short because if verses on verses, I want to expound at length on why the film's so well put together and little things you may not have noticed that I think are just really, really great. Um, but I think I'm not good even... Mm, Ooh, how do I say it without like emotional charge? And I don't know why that's even my goal. But uh, unlike Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and unlike Space Jam, both of which see previous episodes, I think use the multiverse in interesting functional ways. Uh, this uses the multiverse concept in a supremely core way that I love and think is very important. And I think is a reason in part that like, love is a powerful emotion, man. And um, because this movie is full of love and hits one of the core themes that a lot of us really cleave to dearly, which is that we're all connected at some level, whether physically, metaphysically, or even, um, you know, electrochemically or blah, blah, blah. We're made of stardust. This concept that humans always have been telling ourselves and coming back to that we matter uh, and you cut and that the enemy is is, you know, the other flip side of that is this nihilistic feeling that nothing matters and that uh, we like stories that basically make the argument for landing on the side of, no, if you make the choice to love and choose things to matter, they do. And that's good. And you can break the chains of intergenerational trauma and love is this transformative. Great. And that's, uh, you just can't go wrong with that message if you execute it mm -hmm. well. And I think this movie executes it really well and uses the multiverse very specifically as a means to create a Sonder experience, meaning uh, putting your mind, you know, in someone else's shoes for a moment. Like what more perfect stru form, like structural gimmick is there than you literally go into other people's bodies and their slightly different versions of your life uh, it, to get different perspectives that you don't already have and broaden your empathy for different people in different situations. You literally get to be, it's quantum leap, right? And it's even right. Dr. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has the thing where they, they whatever, dream walk, I forget what it's called, but where they puppet other versions of themselves. And yet very conspicuously, or like there's no attempt at, that is not how they're using that. It's not really a lever to promote empathy, uh, as much as, I mean, maybe specifically for the Scarlet Witch, like to make her slightly empathetic, but this is a community thing, right? This is, uh, we get so many viewpoints and we see what it would be like to be in a lesbian relationship when you at started having an issue with your daughter's lesbian relationship. And that's just one level. You learn how to be kind when at first you were crotchety because your husband is kind and uh, and we'll get into it in verses on verses, but I just think it's self-evidently about that core human concept of um, life gets better and you tend to have healthier relationships and more rewarding experience if you can calm down, take a deep breath, stay present and empathize with other people and then make a decision that is based on like a charitable, you know, mm. uh, unless you have reason to believe otherwise, assume everyone's coming from a place of good intention or relatable intention, like fear or whatever normal human response, and then make an empathetic decision, <laughs> like try to put yourself in other people's shoes. It's the uh, golden rule as a movie, and the multiverse is perfect for that, so it pairs really well, I think. Yeah, interesting. I, I mean, I agree entirely about the community aspect, too. I think that that's because, like, it's um, it's not like in Scarlet Witch, it's not something you have done or something you a choice you're about to make is going to influence you and by extension everyone else that's like the cost but like in order to heal it you need to heal yourself this movie is about healing yourself but also healing the relationships around you which mm -hmm. is a more inclusive more involved 
kind of uh, thing. And I also love about this movie that it, to me, it's like the tr definitive, like mainstream, like true multiverse movie. It actually explores like the infinity concept. Chunk, Adam, this is Alpha Abe again. Oh my God. You didn't piss yourself. Yes, I did. No, it's changed. I did. You need to, I did you need to kill your father. You need to piss more, but it doesn't matter. Damn it. You need to kill your father now. Kill your father. We don't have time. Chunk. I can't tell if this is wish fulfillment for me or if Abe what? is doing something weird. <laughs> Well, so why is tell. the sound chunk? Why is it ch-chunk? Why is it always to me? Why doesn't F Abe ever give a shit what you're up to? Because you know I mean? I'm constantly doing weird stuff that's so statistically improbable that I'm I immune guess that's to right. verse yeah. jumping. That's right. You guys are weird today. Yeah, it's a fast elevator ride, right? True. Uh, that's true. So speak. D dare I say, <laughs> hey, hey, beta Abe, are you done with your rant or did you have more you wanted to say? Before I move forward. No, no, I, I mean, I, it like actually explores the infinity concept. Ah. And I thought that that makes it, we, we flirt with that with like the, like so far when the films that we've covered, they, it's like they hand pick. This one is like, what if you really went infinite with it and tried to display that for, uh, getting infinite know, with for it. For the movie. Yeah. And it's, that's, yeah, that's it. I love that. Uh, yeah. I'd never seen it before, uh, until this week because I am the kind of person that, wants to resist hype and form my own opinion. And I just felt like there was no way to do that. Um, so I watched it this week. I really, really liked it. Uh, I thought it was really strong and uh, a well-made film. So I think what is interesting about it for the multiverse conversation is it's the first film I've seen that is interested in the multiverse as like, as a way to explore meaning and not as a way to make plots or clever connections between things. Like it's not just a story convention. It's a meaning convention. Um, and I appreciated that about it because that's the aim of this podcast that we're making while screaming through, uh, the different universes. Uh, so like, I want to introduce an idea that like occurred to me here as like sort of the philosophical grounding for this, this particular movie. And I think a lot of multiverses and that is, um, are you guys familiar with Anselm's argument for the existence of God? You guys know oh, that? And he argument? started pissing himself. Good. Thank you, Adam. I've been waiting for that. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Are you familiar with Anselm? I'm not familiar argument? with it. Okay. No. No. So Explain. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a very brief summary of it. I can't do it exact justice. The argument is essentially a single sentence, which is that than which a greater cannot be thought must in fact exist because to exist is better than to not exist. And say, it's, it, say it again. That, that was really fast. So it is that than which a greater cannot be thought. So the object that, or maybe right. not object is right. Uh, that than which a greater cannot be thought must in fact exist must because fact exist. because okay. to exist is better than to not exist and it's that been used which therefore ought to be so be so unto you exactly <laughs> yeah, that's it's, the rest of the it's very job for rest of the i totally <laughs> agree so it's a proof that people have come and gone from as far as as a proof for the existence of god right uh, because that's the argument that he was making, right? The being that one cannot imagine greater must in fact exist. I would say it also applies to this version of the multiverse, mm -hmm. uh, which is to say the way the multiverse is being used is an extrapolation of all that we can imagine existing in a universe or any universe or any set of universes, right? And the concept of infinity is still not fully explored. It's assumed, it's yada yada, but it's not, it doesn't actually exist. Uh, at, like practically speaking, and I'll, I'll say what I mean by that in a minute. It This argument matters because it's about manifesting what we think is the ultimate sense of us. That's what this multiverse is. It's a, it's a permanent self abstraction. It's an abstraction of all that we think we are, all of our, uh, all of our experiences, all that we deem possible. And yet I think it also shows the limits of human imagine, imagination and, and creativity mm -hmm. uh, and also the limits of our interest in it uh, mm -hmm. in the following way. So one way is we never imagine a universe in this movie where uh, basic good, evil or emotional context is alien to us. Like I never, we never imagine a universe where up is down or bad is good or, or uh, murdering is good. And yeah, we never imagine that universe. The Every universe, you. correct. Every universe we go into 
exists or it predicates and assumes that the basic logic of our universe still exists. And physics even at a yes. base level. Except well, arguably the pinata mm, or the cartoon Maybe not universe. the pinata one. Right. But like yeah. the more important thing is emotionally. The way we right. perceive things right. emotionally, they never jump away from that. Because if they did, uh then we love really love, would have right. we really would have an everything bagel that uh projects meaningless not uh, meaninglessness onto it that's the problem with the multiverse and this movie very artfully crafts a way around it by sort of throwing that objection into a pile of black circles and be like you know the fearful thing you have you get it but you never actually have to confront it because if we did confront it it would swallow the story um and so they do this thing that i think is very effective and i respect it which is they allow you to sort of not have to actually look at it, but imagine it in ad infinitum and not confront the, the reality of these uh, philosophical constructs not existing in a universe that still does exist. Um, Cause if they did yeah. that, we'd be truck, we'd be hung on that. So that's the well, first I think. Thing. And they also intentionally turn towards the metaphorical level of it. That Absolutely. Is the personal, the personal familial stakes and they turn it into a metaphor about, Processing trauma itself. Absolutely. And, and the bagel becomes despair and depression. And you're like, that kind of works. But a second ago, the bagel was actual, the meaning, the meaninglessness of infinity. Now they yada, it's just yada, personal that. depression. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it never, no, see, and I think this is why it resonates for people. I think people very easily make the leap from personal depression to everything is meaningless. Nobody yes. needs to nobody needs mm. to prove that to them and I would argue philosophically that's not true. That's one of the problems we have socially right now is that that leap is too easily made, but that's a different podcast probably. Mm. Uh so that's one thing. The other thing is it does it sort of creates what I would call a sort of existentialist garden of eden. And what I mean by that is that uh the basic problem that most of us have is that uh, meaning seems out of reach and is therefore uh, everything is meaningless, right? That's the, that's the fall of it. And as a consequence, joy is no longer available to us. A thing that we feel like we should have, joy is no longer available to us. That metaphor is very clearly drawn in this movie, but it's been drawn in art elsewhere, and it's an existentialist metaphor. Um I would say, like, for instance, if you read the Sandman comics, right, there's a character in, like, the second and third volumes of that called uh, Delirium, who used to be Delight, but now she's Delirium because there's been a fundamental, dis like, change in her character that is irreconcilable. That, to me, suggests uh, the way human beings perceive their existence now is joyless and that joy is impossible to reconcile. And this movie is trying to be a prescription for that problem. And I think that's what makes it so effective because it's so rare that a movie dares to address that problem and we all feel it. Um, mm. I think there's issues with existentialism, but I do find it romantic. That's what's going on in this movie for the most part with the metaphor. And I think the multiverse allows us to yada yada the aspects of things that are beyond our imagination or power um, for better, or for worse. Anyway, I feel like I've talked long enough, so I'm going to well, turn this over now. Ultimately existentialism for the record does have an, an argument for that or yes, you know, it does. An path for that. That's uplifting, which is that, uh, and is, I only want to mention it because it's the one I personally subscribe to is that right. everything may well be meaningless in an inherent sense. Like what is meaning? The question of meaning may be meaningless, but that does not dilute. In fact, it frees you to choose to imbue things with meaning and do whatever you want, man. And it's literally like at the end of this movie, she says, uh, we can do whatever we want. Nothing matters. And earlier she said nothing matters in a bad way. Now she means it in a good way, right? It can be liberating and uplifting and empowering. Um, you don't, I just people listening. I, you don't necessarily have to stop it. Oh, everything's meaningless. I guess that means I should despair. You know, there's like stages. Beyond of course that. not. Mm -hmm. But that yeah. is the, that's the existentialist <laughs> argument on a different yeah. podcast. I would start to pick at that because I don't agree with it. But I, but that is the argument being made by the movie, and I think there's also the enough. argument that, or I mean, just there's the reality in, that in this movie there is still a special child, and there's a special mm. mother for that special child, right? There is That's the right. one, even if they're a villain. So that does kind of assume 
that there is some form of providence or some kind of destiny to the universe because it perfectly kind of like the math adds up, you know, like there is always a counter action for every action. Uh, and I think what, yeah, I had the same kind of thought while watching this. I was like, that this is interesting because like, if you go back far enough and far enough, and even with like the rock world, uh, at one point the rocks and they're talking for like their emotional breakdown, which is kind yeah, of a I cool love way that. to do that. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, even when that happens, that's kind of presenting it in a way of like humanity never existed. The reason we're here is because there's nothing here, but if the reality is no, there's not nothing there. You can still inhabit a rock and still have like this universe can exist just for this moment. There's so meaning you are so because important. they're talking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah of yeah. course. And this is, uh, this is alpha a, by the way. And now I need you to punch yourself in the nuts. <laughs> who? Oh, First direct, direct that who? Him. Wow. <laughs> After I know beat on it's really the it, yeah, it's really the not clean part of it that upsets me the most. Uh, okay, no, well, <laughs> how no? about that? Okay. No, I'm not going to do that. What are the consequences, AA? Yeah, could huh? you outline them for me? AA, a- a- Alpha a- Abe, Alpha Abe. Abe. Well, yeah. thank you. I've never <laughs> been called Alpha <laughs> Abe before. You're Abe B. Epperson. Yeah, yeah. I don't think uh-huh. I would like being known as the other Abe. You know what I mean? I don't think that that being stolen from you is not the best experience. And the chunk would... chunk yeah. went away. Huh. It's like he's taking criticism yeah, yeah. on the, his direction. Mm. Of it's it. like he's I, doing it. <laughs> interesting. Should we move into verses on verses because we're basically already doing that? Yeah, let's do it. All Absolutely. Right. Um. Well, I let's see. Ooh, what the fucking chunk chunk is taking me out of it? What was the last thing Abe said? Uh, I think he mostly agreed with me and then said, "Punch myself in the nuts." Does that help That's you get right. back on track? And did we move? Did we move on from that? Or I did not. I did not punch myself in the nuts. So if that helps you, uh, okay. Can I? So I'll I'll send this yeah. in a trajectory if you don't mind. Um. Yeah. So, what do you think it means? Like, is this a meaningful problem that we're fundamentally unwilling to create art about things that destroy our emotional or spiritual uh, sense of how things work? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that like I didn't have to abstract too far to imagine creating a world where bad is good and up is down and stuff and like making that world like that belongs in infinity, but I I just don't think we'll ever really see that multiverse. Is it because it's unwieldy or is it because, uh, that makes I think you art see meaningless glimpses of it. We just, I just covered crimes of the future for gamefully. And I would argue okay. that is they make pain pleasure, which is fundamentally, that is one that's been played with before, like Hellraiser or what have you. Sure. But it is a fundamentally disquieting effect to create a universe where a polar opposite of a core thing pain is pleasure um it's disturbing like they have you know surgery sex and shit and uh i do find that you're right that it's super rare and i'm always impressed when someone's willing to go there uh because it always just feels wrong and that's what ultimately i find mm, less than truthful about the back half of this story arc right. is that Wayman says several times, for example, like you are the chosen one. Um, you are, you are a failure because you're so full of potential and one day you'll reach your true potential. You can stand against Jobel Tabaki. Your love is blah, 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 blah. And that all turns out to be true. Um, and personally, and it's just my bag, but like, I prefer the version of this tale like Lewin Davis is a version of this tale from the point of, from the vantage of someone where you really aren't the chosen one. Now, what do you do? How do you accept right. that you're not the chosen one? Um, the one that's not the, the hero's one. journey. Right. right. We watched every movie we watched there, the chosen one. Right. Um, so I do think that is sort of wrapped up in a neat little bow in a way that is perfectly fine does not ruin the movie for me, but doesn't make it as philosophically intriguing or truthful to me as it could be, I suppose, in theory. Yeah, I mean, so this is where I feel like maybe the the most meaningful uh, pillar to assault is actually not the construct of the multiverse in this case, but it's the hero's journey, right? Where it, it's the problem of the way that we digest stories, particularly in American culture, 
is through this narrative of a person having to go through a journey where they learn and grow and overcome an obstacle. And because of mm. our, because we're immune to stories about people who aren't special boys, because we've seen so many special boy stories, every movie has to top that to give us the sweet, sweet emotion juice that we need. Right. And I think the hero's journey in this case does render the larger philosophical underpinnings a little bit moot because they're in contradiction, right? Because again, Infinity, as the movie so I, aptly points out, mm. would eliminate the hero's journey, right? A knowable, accountable Infinity like this, like of a right. material Every, world. Everyone is a hero. Yeah, but I wouldn't yeah. say right. that zeroes out the points it is making because it works Not on entirely. multiple levels and right. it is taking bites out of things that are totally true, right. like Absolutely. breaking the chains of intergenerational trauma. The way that trauma feels like existing in a multiverse because trauma literally causes you to fail to process memories in the proper order, right? And they talk about the cracked vessel. I really think that is an apt and intentional metaphor for the way trauma affects the human brain. Um, just so they eat. just change what the speech is about. Right. They're like, start with a speech about infinity. And then they start talking about a thing about like, hug your kids, people. And you're like, well, I do agree with that. You know, so you still feel good, like leaving the theater. Just, just to but be I clear. agree with you that it pivots in the middle and starts sort of changing philosophical rails. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that in terms of how we experience the movie. I just mean like, if you were to lay this out on a, like as a proof on a document, yeah. like a math equation for the logic, it wouldn't, it, it would undermine itself that way. But I totally agree that the experience of watching, and I, and I never want anybody to misquote me, the experience of it is incredibly impactful, which means they did it right. They made a good movie because it works. But uh, so now I'm like evaluating it on a more abstract philosophical sense, just to be clear. Abe, I feel like I cut you off. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, even in that abstract sense, like the like if we're talking about it just on paper about like, are these contradictory elements? And is this really just the hero's journey? Is this a criticism that we can lob at the hero's journey in general? I think that what's something that's important about the DNA of this film is the concept of the redo. Um, you do have the ability in the hero's journey to better yourself. In fact, that's, that's what Act 2 is all about. Yeah, exactly. But in this movie, this has the ability to give us that all is lost point and that moment where it's just like, yeah, it's fuck it. You know, when they're looking at the everything bagel, that is like deep in the movie when typically our hero would be accepting uh, the call they she's denying it you know right there there's a very clear yeah dark night of the soul very clear right yeah. and that's only set, saved by the concept of the redo you can at any moment just say she just decides to go back to that one universe and it's just like that concept is i think intrinsic to how this kind of splays out uh, in terms of like its own unique kind of structure, its own unique way it makes you feel is because it makes you feel like I thought the movie's wrapping up. It's also they also knew this because they knew to do that moment where she literally dies and then they go a film by Daniels the end. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, yeah, that was great. They knew they wanted yeah. to they wanted you to think that this is all throwaway because they know that their movie is just a it's all just nonsense. It's just, it can just burn away. Well, that's the, I think that leads me to another question that, uh, that this movie actually brought to the surface more than others, which is, uh, okay. So I'm going to accept for now the, the, the sort of Sartrean man as artist create your own meaning, uh, worldview, because I think that a lot of us have that. And, and ask the question, does a movie, to be truly successful, does a movie need to, uh, to do, do, does objective reality need to exist for stakes to be important? Like some version of objective reality, right? So in this case, what I'm asking is, uh, so then she just sort of turns to love. Why? Because her husband loves her. Uh, and we sort of ignore the fact they were getting divorced before because of their faults, right? And we ignore the human aspect of it and sort of lift it to an ideal. But that also is on the everything bagel, right? Like if you're being philosophically consistent, it's also in the everything mm -hmm. bagel. But we sort of right. isolate it because intrinsically in our hearts, we know there's something special about love and inexplicable about it. And do we need that kind of 
do we need it to actually matter for the stakes to land in the film? Or does that not really matter? Is it enough just to do the artifice of it? What do you I think? I demand that you punch yourself in the nuts. No, I won't do that. Now a horrible fate's going to befall us. <laughs> this is not horrible enough? This, fate, Abe. this is hor- not horrible enough for you? Going from universe to universe without hope? I mean, I, I think I think Adam's right. She She's like, she lets go of her daughter mm-hmm. and then her daughter p- kind of extends her hand out and then she can accept her is a very telling way of how they want to navigate that tale, right? right? It's It's not about you just doing something and being that special person though it's about finding a way to kind of make all of the universes kind of come in and making your reality changing your reality it is always about one universe this universe uh and chunk in this universe you need to send me nudes Michael, you yes. need to send me your nudes Finally, right now. it was me. I was hoping for one. Great. Is this the one you wanted? Can they, what, can they be of Adam? No. No, who would want to they see that? They can't be of Adam. Nobody would want to see Adam that. can be there, but you need to send me nudes of you. <laughs> I'll just and watch you, you take them. do it them. now, they're coming. A version of you is coming to murder us all. I'm working Michael. on it. I'm working on it. Let's see. You, you really don't, are working on it. It doesn't feel like you're working on it. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yeah. Nude in this. Are you doing it? Great. Uh-huh. There you go, Abe. Great. Why did, what you want. why did you CC me? I didn't need nice. it. <laughs> why would I be? <laughs> well, the CC stands for uh, cubic centiliters of <laughs> semen. <laughs> um, hey, great. Nice nudes. Nice nudes. Can I say <laughs> good stuff about the movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah please yeah. go for it. Yeah, yeah. That uh, I feel like we're working a lot on the philosophical level, and I wanted to talk a little on the Edgar Wright level. Um, as a roundabout way of also having a hot take, but start by saying that I just think let's unpack a little like what we mean when we say it's really well executed. Sure. Um, so the first shot is the fan. I'm not going to synopsize the whole movie. I just have a quick list of stuff. Um, but the first shot is the family in a round mirror. The mirror falls and changes angle on a time change. And that becomes like a porthole portal. And that we go through into a shot of the messy living room with that same mirror in the background. And in the background is also a fish tank, also a security footage grid. So it's like, there's miniature worlds. We went through a portal. The security footage grid is worlds within worlds. Um, we're already seeing multiple angles of things, multiple things seen from different views by different people. The empathy is literally a visualized metaphor, like all throughout especially in act one. Um, Evelyn mentions that they have two shades of white paint and they have two lives, one in the laundromat, one in the blah, blah, blah. So it's like two worlds, two different sames. Um, their names pronounce Wang, but everyone says it Wang. Uh, they speak both Chinese and English and, you know, interchangeably, not interchangeably, but fluidly back and forth. Evelyn used to want to be an actor as in the profession where you live other people's reality. Uh, they pass a couple that looks like them. You know, she looks at the TV and imagines being in that world. Uh, it turns out she has a ton of hobbies, so she's dabbled in many things, but never like fully committed to things. Alpha Wayman sees life through a different lens, literally, because he doesn't wear glasses. Uh, they there's that moment where they hold up the divorce papers, and on one side is the divorce paper, on the other yeah, side of the weird yeah. instructions. So like they're they're literally looking at the same thing, but getting different meaning Two sides out of, of it. One coin. Yeah. Um, yeah, over and really over. Well there's, yeah. And something I thought was interesting is this is my second time watching it. That is my shit. Is that shit? And then the end of Act 3, like the catharsis shit about love, because I do love love. And whether you can pick apart if it's honest, it does feel good. The impact works on me. Absolutely. Where I'm like, I like, I like people loving and getting love in return and feeling accepted and growing closer together. Yeah. It feels good. So um, uh, what was interesting to me is I missed in the middle and I was really looking for it. And I really don't think, I think the s- visual symbology density goes way down in act two because they're focused much more on, it would be crazy if hot dog fingers, it would be crazy if butt plug fight, I didn't need the fighting. That's that's my hot take. Is like people I really any, latch on the fighting? spectacle of the movie. Like no, no, I'm saying um, I the movie was two hours. 
I would love a 90 minute version and I would take all that time out of the fights. I thought the fights were super well done, but I much, much, much lo- like prefer the elements of this movie that are like catnip to me are the interpersonal relationships. And then the Edgar Wright slash Jordan Peele density of visual symbology. And I'll just say noticeably when they get into the fights, there is stuff like the black circle motif is the bagel or whatever, but it becomes much more like, well, we're covering an amazing fight and we're doing really cool stunt choreography. Look at that. Look at that. And I'm fine with that, but I get a lot of that. I was more interested in the Edgar Wright shit where you were like, it's a shot of a mirror reflecting a security camera grid. Worlds within worlds within worlds. I'm like, that's cool. That's more exciting to me than a good fanny pack fight. I, I Especially on the, the second fights, viewing. It's, it's interesting because I think the fighting is definitely necessary for the metaphor to work it's more necessary on a metaphorical level than i think it is on like a driving the plot forward level uh because her an alternate version of herself is useful and happy and like is that uh it's well it's like as a construct for how they navigate this conflict between the dimensions fighting a bunch of uh a bunch of people who may or may not also be you know, warped in uh, alpha brains is not the only way it needed to be done. Uh, Maybe not even the most interesting way it needed to be done, like as a plot device. I mean, obviously you you cast Michelle Yeoh, you want her to, uh, you want her to fight, right? I mean, that's what she does. Yeah. So like, I see why that happened. And also Kung Fu movies are awesome. Why not? But I think, again, because the stakes are a little amorphous for the first half of the movie, we don't care that much about it. Um, like, mm. You don't care about the fighting. Not that it's not cool. Not that you don't enjoy it visually, because I That's definitely did. It's super well done. Yeah, it's Yeah, great. but you don't care because it doesn't connect to a conflict in a direct way. It only connects metaphorically. I disagree. Okay, great. Entirely. With both of you. I, I think liked the fighting the is where necessary. I just thought condense them. I understand the impulse because you're like, the good shit is this shit, actually, Mm -hmm. is what your argument. But I think that the fighting is near and dear to, like, everything working. And it's not metaphoric. I think it's, it's like... What I one of my favorite parts of the movie is that they spend so much time on uh, on Evelyn. Essentially, once she goes into like the analog uh, Michelle Yeoh, right. where she's famous and you know like mm-hmm. everything, it's always represented by a bunch of flashing lights, and she's starting to be dragged to the other that world, and she even reflects to Alpha Wayman. I need to tell my Wayman how happy I am without him. Like it's so much about her and it's so much about like the, uh, the, the grabbing of the hero gauntlet and running with it when the answer to this movie and the way out of it, like the unlock is absolutely not that way at all. It's not about you being a hero. It's about you being okay with the way that the world is. That's true. And that should chunk. You need to sit. You need to tickle my prostate right now. Tickle my prostate, Michael. <laughs> okay. I more. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. More. Yeah, he's been doing that every minute. He hasn't been speaking. So this yeah, is well, keep on, someone okay. that's part of the sending nudes service. If you ask yeah. for a nude, you get this a prostate is a, tickler. Good job. You did it. This is an outrageous demand because great, of great, that. Great. Hopefully, hopefully that made up for the Adam's sheer cowardice and fear of his own nuts. Mm-hmm. I wasn't afraid of it. Swing at him. I just. Do you see a bathroom in this dimension? Because I don't. I just. You know. I, I think wash you're it worried off. your nuts will take you in a fight. <laughs> you know what? Don't I think my back. nuts would take me too. I agree. <laughs> I think you're fucking right about that. <laughs> hey, Arr, these stones. Hey, mm-hmm. so so, but I can I I I understand that uh, we're all instinctively avoiding sparring too much with our points of view. But Abe, can I ask you just a question that I don't mean to be combative? Yeah. So, like, you explained to me how at least if I understood you right, how how giving up the fighting was necessary for the meaning of the movie, which therefore necessitates the fighting, right? If that's your argument, right? Because she has to put it down, that means she had to pick it up as a gauntlet in the first place. Is that right? She, Yeah, she had to... It's more of her denying the call, and it's like intrinsic that to makes her sense. not getting it. But I still think it that is still a metaphorical interpretation of the movie. 
that's still an abstract version of, and I agree it works on that level. Like I can't argue with you, but like on the, why does she need to fight these people in this office to get to maybe the person who's chasing her with wants? We don't understand like on that level, it didn't work. Do you think it worked on that level? I mean, I guess I just don't understand what you mean is the difference. To me, that's just, that's the plot of the movie. They're both elements of the plot. Depends on your definition okay, of work. You're right. Because right. their goal they was also are. for people in the audience to go, this is awesome. I like fighting. And it did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Like, right, what, right, are of the, course. what is the goal? What is right. the goal of the raid redemption or whatever? It's to showcase fighting. Why do you think it's a metaphor? Why do you think that it, what? uh, why the, Why is the fighting why can't it be actual just, it's just fighting, cool fighting. It, it can be it absolutely is that and I'm not and I, again mm -hmm. I like this movie and I like the fighting I enjoyed it but I but what I'm saying is like a lot of times in movies like the raid redemption will say or you know I don't know pick a, pick let's say the matrix why are they why is Dread. there combat in the matrix uh, there's combat in the matrix because that's the way they fend off agents who are trying to kill them Right. It's it, that is literally the only reason there needs to be fighting. If there were combat agents, is the corner point where a plot turn happens. Yeah, yes, that's yeah. correct. So con so Kung Fu becomes uh, the means by which we have this sort of, you know, uh, the, the catharsis flip of, of the coin triumph. or like it, now the plot goes this way or that way, depending on the outcome of this. Correct. Fight. Yeah. Correct. In this movie, Kung Fu is or whatever martial art it is forgive me if it's not that like the martial arts stuff is much more loosely related to why she needs to punch this irs agent and that irs agent and then this cop and then that cop because we get pretty far away from uh what it is she's trying to achieve with her actual physical fighting like because again She's fighting because she needs to get out of this building in this universe. So she's learning a bunch of fighting techniques to get out of this building. But really, it's not that. Really, it's that she's taking advice from a guy who's telling her there's this big bad coming whose wants we don't understand. And the only way out is go do what I say. Right. And this mm -hmm. is this, by the way, is why I was a son of Sam. Same origin story, by the way. Absolutely. This, by the way, is why I was asking the question earlier. Do I need grounded stakes to care? This is the reason because like on like a moment to moment level, the movie, you don't really are. You're not exactly following the objectives in a yeah, way you normally Yeah, but the grounded would. stakes are, will she make up with her daughter? Like, right, right. Will she repair that and relationship? That's, that's right. what's in our heart at that moment. Correct. And that's, but again, we really only address that much later in the film after most of the fighting has subsided has gotten to do its thing right well i'll just point out that aristotle even or i believe maybe aristophanes enshrined you know the element one of the elements of drama is spectacle right and i think there is spectacle that stands it on its own as spectacle poetics right, like fire breathing or sure. what have you yeah oh i agree again nobody's arguing it's not necessary i'm not saying that at all mm. i'm just asking a question for the sake of discussion but like why don't we like the fighting as much as in a different movie? And I think it's this reason. And I'm poking back at Abe because Abe said he disagreed. But if I have belabored this, I can yeah, move on. I don't know. No, no. I mean, like, labor it all you want, baby. Uh, Thank you. I, I will. You mean your prostate, I assume. I keep on <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna rack you a cooney. Keep labor it. Shut up. Yeah. I'm going to control you milk. through your prostate. By the way, one of the, yeah. my favorite oh. jokes in a movie, I, that, that raccoon thing was so good oh. and I loved it. The and whole of course, way. I love what they did with yes. their ability yes. to make stuff touching on a dime. Like I'm useless alone. We're all useless alone. It's a good thing. You're not alone is yeah. yeah they can turn a joke into a, a genuinely touching moment that's a repeated See, to me that is actually the, a, like a metaphor i understand that that is like it to me the rakakui stuff where it's <laughs> in her moment of saying like okay so i need to fight like uh uh waymond mm -hmm. i need to essentially become kind and love and uh, and empathy is the path I need to go in all of my universes and kind of experiment with that and see what makes it makes people tick and understand who they are as an entity. That is a metaphor, right? Because it's like shown side by side in the cut along with uh, her fighting on the stairwell trying to get to her daughter. 
Sure. So it's to me that that is an unnecessary part, but the fighting is still necessary in the same exact, like when you were describing the matrix, I don't see how they're different. Okay. They're using martial arts in the identical ways to me. Okay. So, it super um, actually reminded me of the experience of going through Alcoholics Anonymous and hitting step 10 where you are actually, I'm sorry, step 10 is reconsidered, but I mean the making amends step. Um, step nine. It's very, yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, you do feel like a superhero afterwards. Uh, I'll just say the times in my life where I have notably taken concentrated action to let go and accept uh, you get a real charge off that. Like, I don't oh, of course. agree with the message of the film. I don't either. Right. I actually deeply oh, agree no, with it. Oh, no, uh, not that any of us are. I, I, well, that's, I, but I wanted to make sure I said that. I deeply agree with yeah. it, even as I'm philosophically interrogating it, because mm-hmm. I, because something in my heart said, that's right. You know what I mean? Like, and I think we yeah. all did. Mm-hmm. That's why we loved it so much. And I think that's the genius of the multiverse concept as used in this movie is it kind of strips away the, the, why are we fighting the IRS agents questions? So you can basically right. mm-hmm. evaluate it on a purely, uh, only focus on the things they want to discuss. Yeah. Almost yeah. like a parable. Like it, this, this thing right. becomes a parable because they strip away your ability to track where you are in each universe and what it mm-hmm. means. And I think that was great because I don't want to do that. Well, you know, another thing it does that I think is really smart that is not about empathy and it's just a functional thing, but I don't know why more multiverse things don't do this, is twice that I noticed at least two very important sequences. They are able to shoehorn in exposition that in any other format would feel really shoehorned in. Um, but it doesn't because it's a multiverse movie <laughs> like it. So uh, they shoehorn in a, in a backstory montage because she's literally watching her life flash before her eyes, which makes sense in the context of the plot in the elevator. And you're not bored because it's a plot point. But at the same time, you know what they just earned? The right to waste your time showing their character's entire life story sure without did. you thinking that's sweaty. Yeah. And they did it again where... Uh, she gets incidentally pulled into and like a sees. pocket dimension where she and Wayman just happen to be discussing their divorce. And it right. happens at the exact moment where Blake Snyder in Save the Cat would say, you need to return to your B plot at this moment. Right. So what do they do? They just have her get sucked into a dimension where she's already talking about the B plot. Incredible, because like that really is a smart use of multiverse. It like I so rarely can you slip exposition by me without a couple spoonfuls of sugar. And this really works on me where I'm like, that wasn't sweaty because you're allowed, you're already flipping around, flipping channels. Right. So it's a fine. I think they also, I think they also like found this like golden technique that we're going to see other movies use. And I don't know if they're going to use it as effectively as this one did of like giving you enough, nothing matters that all the functional pieces that get us between emotional content units they mm. we don't care like all the sinewing stuff we don't care that much so it doesn't have we to... care so much about we're like yes sister about all the shit they are saying so yeah. i don't care why it's two guys jumping on butt plugs and i don't care why it's like oh she breaks this right. guy like this guy breaks his neck and this guy pulls his tooth out it's all just kind of dumb joke gets me to new piece of content that i want uh and i hate using the word content but that's what i like new emotional substance unit uh like and I think that was really smart. Like that's them understanding and tonally getting what movie they're making, and therefore getting away with stuff that I think if you were in a screenwriting class, you'd probably be getting ripped apart for. Well, I mean, and wrongly so, by the way. But and yet they you probably have would. so many bankable resonant lines. They're really good at a little tiny. Like this sounds bad. And I mean it as a compliment, but they could write really kick-ass Hallmark cards because they're not jokes. They're like a saying that makes you go, that is true. You know what I mean? Like they can write really resonant shit. Like I liked the repeated refrain, she's not most people, but they use it in a context where it be- means both special boy, but it also means we don't get to be, we only get to live one life, right? You're not most people. You're just you. You only get access to the experiences you get access to. Um, the present, you're always trapped in the present regardless. Even with the universe flipping technology, you still only experience one timeline of events from your own point of view. That was a little um, unclear to me. Is that what happens? Because it seems like at a certain point she started to experience more at once. 
right? Oh. I thought that's what well, happened. Hmm. I, when she overloads her brain and becomes fractured and connected to all universes, I think we're meant to not fully comprehend her experience. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's what's so interesting is, and again, that's why I was sort of talking about this this sort of Anselm's argument piece of this. Like, because again, the way the multiverse is being used here is in this abstraction that we therefore create to exist. Like, it has to exist because it's the most I can abstract. That's the way, mm -hmm. like, this is a substitution for a god, right? That kind of consciousness. Uh, and that's why I think this movie resonates philosophically. Because, mm -hmm. like, again, it's an experience you can't comprehend it, but you can imagine it. You know? And I think it works on that level. I can imagine it. And, like, I accept the conclusions because I can imagine it. Can I comprehend it? No. Right? Does that make sense to yeah. you? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and there's just a few other, other than that, there's just like a few key changes that aren't even unique to this film, but put it in a minority of films. Like most heroes journeys end with you vanquish the villain through dominance over the villain or pluck or right. right like outmaneuvering in this, they do a thing that has been done before, but rarely, which is surprise. The final climax is you actually preventing the villain from destroying themselves that's how far you've come that's how much the relationships have changed it was cool um yeah and it's a great it's, it's still impactful to me right it's a, it has it doesn't have nothing in common with the jesus story no no because it's about it selflessness does. and it's about yeah. right yeah totally it's a it, that, that trope by the way exists more regularly in movies that are about reaching uh, milestones like uh you might call them coming, coming of, age. of age yeah 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 uh those kind of movies have more conclusions that are like this which is great because again we didn't think we were in that genre of movie but we are you know mm -hmm. uh sorry please i cut you off he's just gonna tell you to do something to his dingo <laughs> or something <laughs> i didn't say oh, shit. I mean, I, mike i cut mike <laughs> off uh but he probably is gonna do that oh oh yeah uh chunk chunk no i got <laughs> Dun 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 <laughs> chunk chunk. Um, I was just gonna say uh, one I forgot to mention that I really like is, of course, the hobby Wayman's annoying hobby of putting googly eyes on things. Loved is, it. So he lit he literally humanizes things around him. Like it's an act of empathy to the extent that he humanizes inanimate objects. Of course, obviously paid off with the rock scene, but I just think even the act itself is a is a clue that he is already a master at empathizing it, which is paid off with little things like how did you convince Deirdre who, by the way, in the script's name is Deirdre Bo Beardra, which I really Amazing. like. Um, how'd you convince Deirdre to extend our loan after I busted up the shop? And he's like, I just talked to her. So he has the thing she lacks, right? He doesn't find it difficult to connect with people. Um, mm -hmm. and it's just a, I mean, like it's a solid, line drive slash home run where like they know what they're doing. They know their way around a thing. I just, for my money think that it turns into sort of a different movie in the middle. And, uh, I, I like act one and three better than I like act two, but act two still kicks ass. The googly eye is such a perfect visual metaphor for what the movie's about. Uh, and she opens her third eye. Yes, I mean, yeah, it's, great. Right. Payoff. They use it as an enlightenment, uh, imagery, mm -hmm. but also it is fundamentally absurd so it fits the sort of meaning structures of this movie. The tone they're going yeah, for, Yeah, it's right. so good. Uh, I mean, it's really smart, and uh, I, I, I got chills when I saw how they used it. I was like, oh, my God, this is really good. Um, yeah. Can I ask you, like, one personal question? Do you guys mind if I ask you a personal mm -hmm. question? You know, we Do can it. cut it if you don't want it. Uh, I'm fist deep at Abe's prostate, <laughs> I think. That's, that's why I thought that was, now was fine. Uh, uh, this is Alpha Abe. You're gonna need to twist. Uh, done with the prostate. Twist my oh, done. slowly. <laughs> Finally, okay. Wait a minute. Alpha Abe huh? is just. Huh? I don't even think there is what? an Alpha Abe. This is I, a real dimension scam here. What are you here? talking yeah. about? I, I think he's out. just trying to get us to fiddle <laughs> with his parts. It's he's the fucking uh, asshole, what? dude. What? Now you think Abe's that? a freak in this universe. Yeah. It didn't occur to me till now that he's not being genuine with us. Yes. He's never scammed. That's I, why the chunk chunk He's never went scammed away. us I, for sex before. That's I'm true. Black, I, I've been blacking out. Yeah, sure. Uh, right. I've been blacking, been blacking out. out. Uh, by the way, God, it reeks of Adam's piss. Well, I hate this I'm, universe. I, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I have very fragrant it's just piss. just piss and baked beans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's a that's a summer special. It's a heady brew. <laughs> yeah. So my question is, and again, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but I feel like we're talking about the multiverse for a reason, right? And that oh, reason yeah. is trying to like figure out what's it what's it mean. And no, we're trying to get home. God damn it, Adam. Well, then I don't know why we're podcasting. Uh, <laughs> all right, so all right, so, uh, all right. <laughs> so my question is: Do you accept? <laughs> like, do you accept the basic? premise like the 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 pre- the joy based premise of this movie like when you saw like when it was clear that like oh this is a woman who used to be a joyful figure but has lost it because of the sort of like does that does that way of looking at life feel real in to my you? actual real life how much does the philosophy vibe with yeah. me um i we should all answer this but my answer would be i very much agree with the uh he says, slow down and take a deep breath. And you know, they mean it in that way. So the, I do agree that mindfulness, consciousness, and presence give you access to contentment, stability, joy, happiness. If you want access to those things more frequently, I think it's actually reductive to assume all people want is happiness a hundred percent of the time, but whatever you're seeking, uh, I do find that presence and mindfulness and acceptance and letting go, um, you know, a Buddhist would just call it like breaking the shackles of desire, but someone in AA might call it, you know, uh, having the strength to, or having the wisdom to accept things you cannot change. Like we come at this wisdom many different ways, but so like, I think two out of three. So I agree with mindfulness presence. I agree with forgiveness, letting go and love. What I don't really agree with is the underlying hero's journey, special boy thing, which is the idea that don't give up because one day it the stars will align and it will all work out with you. If you show your love to your daughter, that wound will heal really quickly in one scene and it'll all be good then. And, and you know, Michelle Yeoh, you'll just go around in a beatific, enlightened state and everything will go fine from there. I don't think life works that way. I never think there's really an end until you are su- until it suddenly is the end. Um, I think, as Al Swearingen would say, as soon as you're living, there's like more pain coming to you. So um, even no matter how enlightened you get, I think there are challenges and you're not always happy. You don't always want to be happy. Sometimes it's beautiful or fitting to grieve or be sad or you owe it to someone it's, to be angry. It's apt because Al Swearingen, and to finish that quote from mm-hmm. Deadwood, that he says, give a, give a little pain back. His <laughs> That's perfect, right? right? His reason for saying yeah. that is to uh, introduce conflict back into the world because it's unfair. Right. Uh, and what you're saying is it's in a way unfair by this movie to sum it up all like simply in a scene life is not that way I in just the way that, that i think for most people you never mm-hmm. get a moment where you go oh i'm like coming with my soul i am the special boy mm-hmm. um most people's experience is in some way coming to terms with knowing that you don't actually get that Speaking of coming with your soul, this is mm-hmm. Alpha Abe, yeah. and I got a, I got something for you next. Oh boy, that involves. Oh well, it's 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 come. I, uh, you need to come. It's can a you, kiss on. Can each you direct eyelid, that personally? <laughs> can you direct mm-hmm. that to a person? Both yeah. of us, all of yeah. us. Yeah. Just go. okay. Should we move into uh, our final segment? Or did you not answer? I don't know if anyone answered except for you. Adam, you originated the question, yeah. so I think you should now answer. That seems fair. Uh, I do agree with it. I. Again, if I didn't have a faith, I think I would absolutely agree with this. Uh, like I, I always find this world to be very romantic. I've said it a bunch of times. Uh, I do agree. I agree. This is a commonplace experience, and I agree with the way the metaphor is pointing us, which is that like there has to be, uh, there has to be a kind of a belief in love. Like you have to believe it. Uh, you have to work at it. Want yeah, to connect with and, people. and and yeah. surrender to it. Like all those, like all yeah. those actions are true. Uh, it, it is the only way to overcome the sort of the noise of reality. Uh, if you're tr- if reality has to present itself in a way that you can understand, and by you I mean any of us. Uh, it can't, right? I mean, I think one thing that we rarely consider because it's impossible to really sit on it is like, why does the universe have to be comprehensible to us? You know, uh, that's a question that I've thought a little bit about sometimes and I, it's hard to sit in it cause it breaks your brain a little bit. Um, but no, I, I, so I agree with it in that respect. I don't agree with like, 
the I like I could never accept Joy's conclusions about reality because uh because it's not true. You know what I mean? Like her conclusions about reality aren't true. They're not based on a well, real infinity. Isn't the movie saying that she's wrong or that she's the well path again that how, is unwise to how did she, she how did she get to this despairing place and i understand that the metaphor is because of the tradi- like the generational abuse and that part i think is true but like on a philosophical level how did she get there she saw everything she saw everything there is to see and came or to you just on a plot driven level not yeah, from a philosophical way or metaphorically she yeah. did see it so, that's what broke her right like, that's I, the part that we you and i don't agree on uh, because I because yeah. I think it's it's not a real infinity she's encountered for the reasons we've talked about, and also because uh, even if it was a real infinity, I don't know that she would be able to comprehend it. Like that's another jump they make. That's why she's this way. Is she can't comprehend it. And she just says despair. Nothing. Matters. Well, and that's where I disagree with her. You know what I mean? Because that's a decision she made. Uh, more than it is a right, bad. but I think the f- the film disagrees with her. Too. I don't think That's it does. Why she's saved from the despair. I don't think the film does disagree with her. I think the film understands the antidote to it, but it doesn't say the everything bagel isn't meaninglessness. It never says she's wrong about what it really is. It says that there's just an antidote to that poison. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't think I think the film kind of does assume that the the everything bagel is meaninglessness and and assumes that you'll agree with it. You know, and I, that's fine. Hmm. Like I, and I, I know I why people that feel vibe. like that. I only think that the everything bang, ba- everything bagel is only the concept of you're looking into too much. It, you, you can't uh, conceive of it. It's looking at God. That's interesting. Uh, that's not how I understood what she was doing, but I don't disagree that that's an interpretation of it. I could see that interpretation. I guess that's yeah. I guess that was my interpretation. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, interesting. I didn't see any other angle? Uh, like instead of her, instead of like Nazis get their faces melted off, she broke and became a super uh, transitive being. Well, so the Nazis are looking at something, right? The Nazis are looking at something. She's created this thing as a conclusion to having looked at everything. I thought she just could do it and was like, what if I put everything on a Yeah, bagel? I thought it was like Thanos creating a doomsday device because he's a depressive sad boy and she's a depressive sad girl, so she right. made a doomsday device. But I'm, I, make, I'm gonna make a black hole because I can. Oh, I'm looking in the black hole. But you're that saying you is... think the movie enshrines meaning to like, no, she's right that that's valid everything bagel. Yes, I think that, yeah, I, do, I think the movie does state that, yes. She okay. fractured originally in the Alphaverse. That's true. And then and and then and became a being of you know uh, uh, being able to hop okay. over everything. I see and that. And then beca- and then looked into the bagel. Then so created it wasn't the like bagel. Right. Tight. So, I could see yeah, their interpretation. Yeah. Okay, totally I can see that too. Yeah, you're right. The fact that she broke first uh, does matter. So okay, uh, okay, great. I think we answered the question. I enjoyed that. And. The cream cheese would be <laughs> angel, ground up angel. Or the next thing Abe's going to have us make. <laughs> mm. Uh-oh. Chunk, chunk, come. Chunk, chunk. Well, you know what? Uh, this, is, this is Alpha Abe again. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, great. <laughs> yeah? I, Michael, mm-hmm. I need you to fall in love with Adam. Oh, already done. They're too late. <laughs> yeah, Otherwise, they're gonna done. What's the oh? F- already okay, done. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, just just because I have a sense of uh, just because I have a sense of when a thing is over, uh, I feel mm-hmm. like we should pass our final checkpoint and decide whether we're gonna close the wormhole. What do you think, Mike? Do you think it's time? In a slightly alternate reality, we've already finished the podcast. <laughs> God, I wish I was Me there. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Uh, those guys were smarter. Um, okay, so this is uh, closing the wormhole. Right? Yes, where we decide whether we would like to seal this universe off forever, uh, mm-hmm. or we would like to fuse our universe with it, or whether we would like to stay in this multiverse uh, forever. And by this multiverse, of course, we mean the everything, everywhere, all at once multiverse. Mm-hmm. Not this, not this piss soaked baked Abe beans a... metaphor we've been doing this whole time. <laughs> what? Yeah, Wario Universe will call it. <laughs> um, uh, the Wario Verse. I believe I would live in that universe because I think 
that it is a slightly unrealistically rosy colored uh, depiction of, yeah, I, I'll be a special boy who ultimately lives out my full potential and um, learns to love everyone and connect to everyone. Since this multiverse seems to mostly act upon people as a way to encourage empathy, uh, I'm all aboard. I would throw myself into the em empathy wood chipper for sure. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd hop universes. Whoa. Fuck Earth. I think this is better than our universe. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's wow. interesting. Uh, Wish the beta, I'm gonna get you on beta that. Later. Abe, what about you? Are you? Are you? I'm happy stay, staying here, just jerking each other <laughs> off to save the universe. So universes. he closed the portal. <laughs> great, okay. Great. Uh, Cuck Abe closes the portal. I so honestly, this for whatever reason, this universe doesn't feel like it has to be distinct from ours to me. Like I understand that it implies there's uh, hot dog fingered people and raccoons that can make people chefs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, uh yeah. it does seem to incorporate, uh, at least all Disney films. Cause it references Ratatouille, uh, which means it's got at least 80% of our reality now. So maybe I would, uh, maybe I would fuse universes this time, you know, just stick sure. ours with that. Oh, hope I, yeah. hope I get to hope I get to be the person whose brain breaks and I get to learn new skills. That would be nice. Right? Yeah. There doesn't seem to be a downside. You still learn things. No. Yeah. It's highly erotic. Yeah. So I think I'm fusing this time, which I'm kind of surprised mm. to hear myself say. Ooh. What would you call the new universe? Uh, the Gansiverse. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. Uh, Everything, everywhere, all at That's right. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's the most logical title. Hey, uh, are we done? Gans at once. Gans mania. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's my Animal Crossing Island, so I can't use it well, twice. Well, we're supposed to determine who's the asshole. My vote's Abe, and let's get the fuck no! out of here. My vote's Abe, because I, <laughs> I, oh. I smell like prostate and yeah. gum and Hopefully piss. there's a shower on the other side of this portal, because that's what I'll be needing. I like to think that the portal is tight enough that it scrapes all the gunk <laughs> off us as we pass I'd also it. like Hopefully. to think that. It, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I like thinking it about it. It's, it's my hobby, yeah. Well, let's think about right. it now. All right. You guys are all right. Have a good journey. <laughs> all right, we love you. We love you, Alpha. Babe. Babe. Hey. Or Alpha, whatever. We'll see you later. All right. Zoop. Farewell. Cha chunk. This has been a small beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash small beans. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash small beans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the small beans grow into huge giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you! <laughs>